as Tim Clark is up for a competition, we're going to throw things over to your star of our show, Robert Ward. So, welcome to Winnipeg. Is that the best welcome you've had so far this year at a, at a business plan competition or what? All right. A big round of applause for our band, the Ministers of Cool. On behalf of the Stu Clark Center for Entrepreneurship and the Asper School of Business, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the 2011 Stu Clark Investment Competition. Over the next three days, we're going to give you a taste of Winnipeg. You got a little bit of a taste there with Taking Care of Business, one, the only song ever written by, about entrepreneurship, and two, produced by Bachman Turner Overdrive from Winnipeg. Yeah. Yeah. For the students tomorrow night, it's MBAs with brooms, a great night at the Granite Curling Club of you trying to stay on your feet as you take a 40-pound granite rock down the ice. And we're also going to show you what it's like to go to a social in Manitoba. And if you don't know what that is, you have to ask some of the Manitoba students. But tonight, tonight we're going to kick things off. Because the band got us started. But we can't put this on without the help of all of our sponsors. At the top of the list of our sponsors is Mr. Stu Clark, without whom this is not possible at all. So a big round of applause for him. There are two events tonight. We set up at 6 o'clock for the trade show competition. You are competing tonight for fleeces produced by a fine Manitoba company and one started by, a gradu by graduates from the Asper School of Business, Mondetta Clothing. So they're sponsoring the trade show competition. The judges have come through and done their first cut. After we do the elevator pitch, we're going to come back and do the finals on that. The next competition we're going to do tonight is the WOW Hospitality Elevator Pitch Award. And I can think of two of faculty advisors here who will arm wrestle anybody in this room for that. I'm thinking of Van Klaus from Louisville and where's Fred Kiesner from Loyola Marymount. The first place prize for that particular competition is courtesy of WOW Hospitality and their flagship restaurant 529 Wellington. On Saturday night, you will be whisked away to 529, the finest restaurant in Winnipeg, where you will be served a beef dinner, a tour de beef, and you will have a wine tasting that involves a minimum of five different vintages selected by their resident sommelier for you. All right? got some other sponsors that make this possible. On Saturday morning, you're going to be going after the challenge rounds. From Venture Alberta, we've got Randy Thompson and his crew. Where's Randy in the back? All right, Randy and Mark and uh, Prim Jot and Don are all at the back of the room. They're going to be sponsoring that. We've also got RBC, Royal Bank uh, Corp, is going to sponsor the other side of the challenge on Saturday morning, so special thanks to them. Have all sorts of other sponsors, including Manitoba Entrepreneurship Training and Trade, which is sponsoring your luncheon tomorrow. But tonight, tonight it's all about you and getting things started. And since the beginnings of the Stu Clark Investment Competition, our lead sponsor has always been the associates of the IH Asper School of Business. And here tonight to say a few words on behalf of the associates is Mr. Barry Rempel. Thanks, Rob. As I was uh, standing a little earlier looking at you, I was a little concerned. I'm glad to see the mic here. I was concerned I was going to have to speak into his chest the whole evening. That was not good. Um, as Rob said, my name is Barry Reppel. For those of you that I have not had the, uh, the fortune to meet yet, uh, I'm a past chair of the Associates at the University and the president of the Winnipeg Airports Authority. It is certainly my pleasure to be able to join with you here this evening uh, and to welcome you on behalf of the Associates to the Stu Clark Investment Competition. Um, it is a couple of glorious days, well, let me rephrase that. There's a little bit of pressure on you. Uh, you have some uh, really big shoes to fill, and uh, I know the competition's pretty, pretty intense. Um, when thinking about what, uh, you know, what, what kind of things have I gone through in business over the years, and what kinds of things uh, have impacted me the most, 
I know in talking to a number of you here this evening, you guys are pretty intense. You guys have it together on what your product is. I want to just share one thing quickly, though, because it's something that drives us uh, in a lot of the business we're involved in, whether it's through the airports authority or otherwise. And it really goes back to a comment that was made by uh, former U.S. President Calvin Coolidge. And his comment was, no enterprise can exist for itself alone. It ministers to some great need. It performs some great service. Or failing therein, it dies. He doesn't really say it that way, but my paraphrase. Uh, it's one of those things when I was thinking about, uh, about the competition, it's really quite appropriate uh, because in part, you're going to be learning that. And in part, it's because what the, it's really what the associates is all about. Uh, when we uh, talk about the associates and what we do, it really is about connecting. It's about connecting people. It's about connecting business to students. It's about connecting business people on behalf of the school to government, on policies, on a lot of different kinds of things. Uh, and we are indeed in the, performance, or in, the, in the role of performing a service on behalf of our school. Uh, it might just, just a moment, if, you, if I can indulge you, on a little bit of history of the associates, because it's a little different than in other places that I've lived where we've worked along with universities. We've had uh, you know, uh, advisory boards, those kinds of things. But uh, a little bit of the history on this was uh, really back in, uh, let's see, that was 19, well, I got uh, the expert here. Arnie, what year did that start? 78? with uh, a former dean, Roland de Grand, de Grand Prix, and uh, he's, he thought there was a really, really important link that was missing in traditional thinking about education uh, and schools. And uh, he got a couple of people together, some, uh, as I mentioned, some people like Arnie. They found 100 business people. Originally it wasn't that big, but they found 100. It's now 200 business people that spend a lot of their time working with students, working with the college, making sure that we that we understand at the university what the needs are, the stuff that Rob has to be helping provide. He's providing a product. That product is all of you to make sure that it meets the needs of, of uh, future business. Uh, we also, be, you know, we're an external organization. We're not part of the university. And uh, we really do work to advance the school's strategic development. And we do a lot of things in, uh, aside from the, what I've mentioned. We've also, over the years, leveraged over $40 million in financial contributions for the school. Management education is undergoing considerable change. Uh, if we're going to be on top of it, whether it's the University of Manitoba or the school that you go to, then business really does need to be an important part of that connectivity. If the private sector really does believe, and I believe we do here in Manitoba, that the existence of quality education and the benefit of these sorts of events uh, are going to continue, then that connectivity is critical to that success. The associates is that structure. So on behalf of the, the associates, I just want to say a little differently than Rob, but the same sort of thing. Uh, bienvenue à tous, bonne chance. Thanks. Thanks, Barry. The Asper School of Business, we have a very tight relationship with the dean's office and the deans from Jerry Gray through Glenn Feldham and now through the new kid on the block who's only been on the job for three weeks, we've always had a great relationship with, with the dean's office. So now to say a few words on behalf of the Asper School of Business is our new dean, Dr. Charles Mossman. Well, good evening, everybody. And we're really glad to have you here. And I would say whether you're a student, whether you're a professor, whether you're a judge, whether you're an entrepreneur, or especially if you're one of the associates who are sponsoring this, we really thank you very much tonight. Um, I wanted to say a few words about the, uh, about the competition. This has been going on for a number of years. And I got to tell you, the number of times that I've come out here and seen some people that could speak a lot better than I can, I really enjoy those elevator pitches. And I really enjoy going around and seeing all the great things you are doing. Now, I want you all to bring it to Manitoba. Because if we can get your businesses started here, it will move us ahead, too. Um, I want to say thank you very much uh, again to the associates for sponsoring this particular part and to all the other sponsors because you help us a lot. 
In addition to that, I do want to just say a few words about the school. The Asper School of Business, in our view, is a very good hidden Manitoba secret, which we hope to make a national uh, treasure going forward. Uh, but one of the real things about this school that's very important has been the Stu Clark Center for Entrepreneurship. I should say that this started um, a number of years ago, and Rob will tell me exactly when, but the initial uh, support financially for it was by Israel Asper, the late Israel Asper, and he set it up originally. And later on, it has had other contributors, and of course, most notably, Stu Clark, who we're going to talk a little more about tonight. In addition to that, uh, I wanted to say that we are very pleased that Stu has helped us out. And um, I'm just going to uh, recognize also, I, I need to mention that Rob Warren, as the director here, has really made this place work. Without Rob's work, uh, it would have been impossible to move forward the way we have. So just before... Now, in, uh, I'm going to bring Stu forward in just a moment for some recognition, which he doesn't usually like us to do, but we're going to make him do it anyway. But I would say that uh, I want to recognize a few people that his contributions have helped us to recognize here. We have, besides Rob, who we're very proud of, we have some professors in entrepreneurship here who have been outstanding. And during the next year, one of the things that we will be doing is rolling out some courses in entrepreneurship across the whole University of Manitoba. They've already started this. I would almost say it's a pilot. We're having to do it on a limited basis, but we're going to get there. But right now, I want to recognize them because they have received uh, research fellowships uh, from the Stu Clark uh, latest contribution, which we'll be recognizing in a moment. And they are uh, Reg Litz, who would like to stand up. And Nathan Gradanis. And uh, we are expecting a lot of them, just as we have from Rob. They've already been delivering, uh, so I know they'll give me hell for this. But I wanted to say uh, we are hoping to make use of their talents. Now, we also have a new professor coming in, Professor Zen Yu Wu, who's coming to us from University of Saskatchewan. And... Professor Wu is uh, coming in, uh, initially at least, uh, receiving uh, the Stu Clark Professorship in Finance, which actually preceded the entrepreneurship ones. And uh, Stu, uh, I should explain this a little bit perhaps. Uh, Zenyu is a finance professor, but he's also a professor of entrepreneurship. He specializes in research in things like IPOs and so on. Uh, he'll be pleased to talk to you later, I'm sure, if you're more interested in uh, the details. For now, though, we don't want to hold things up too much. Now, I want to recognize Stu. Stu has been very generous uh, in giving a donation before, and uh, this time, though, we're recognizing him for an additional $3 million donation that he gave us this last year. This donation is going to allow us to bring in another position where we will have a chair in entrepreneurship, and in addition to it, there's an, another amount of money that will allow us to bring in things like guest speakers and further the efforts of the entrepreneurship within our school. So I'm going to just say once more before I go to this that entrepreneurship is one of the real bright lights at Asper and we want it to shine and shine on the school and, and uh, help us. And I'm sure that each of you who are in these very strong entrepreneurship programs can appreciate uh, that we want to all get some traction from you. So if you're at a school, they want to promote you because you are what's going to uh, give them a bit of uh, good PR as well. At any rate, at this stage, I would like to invite uh, Stu to come forward, and we are going to celebrate uh, his latest contribution to our school. <laughs> he, he signed it again. We're gonna we'll, we'll cash it twice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Would you like to turn that over now, please? Well, 
thanks very much for that, everyone. Um, my involvement with the school uh, started about seven years ago. It was a, when I turned 50, I decided I wanted to, and I was in a position to uh, give something back. And I had met um, uh, Glenn Feltham at, uh, in Calgary and discussed a little bit about what the school was doing because I hadn't been in touch with it for years and uh, got pretty excited pretty quickly about the entrepreneurship program, which wasn't uh, in existence when I went to school. But uh, what I realized after having that meeting with Glenn was that it was something that uh, was near and dear to my heart. And uh, the courses I took uh, when I graduated from commerce at the U of M were allowed me to go out and work for IBM or, or Xerox or you know, maybe get into a big four or big five accounting firm. And uh, none of those, I tried a couple of those earlier on. <laughs> that didn't pan out. That wasn't for me. So um, after talking to Glenn and then meeting Rob, um, I decided I'd dip my toe in the water and, and uh, to try and support uh, the entrepreneurship program, which Izzy Asper had started and was um, moving along but, but needed some help on the financial side. So I, I made a small donation in, uh, in uh, what it would have been 2004 and, uh, and then made quite a larger donation two or three years later after seeing the, the job and, and the results that Rob had um, made with the initial money that I'd given him, he'd, he brought the, 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 the center to a, a completely new level. And I could see that with further support, it was gonna, it, he was really going to make something great here. And it's turned out that way. And this recent uh, donation is, is mostly going to the academic side, uh, which, which I'm supporting a chair in, the, in entrepreneurship. Uh, which they hadn't had one prior to this, and it's something I think is important that not only does the practical side get supported, but the but the academic side in the university absolutely needs support to gain credibility. and And I was quite happy to do that. The uh, the accountability that they have as a group, uh, we were just at an advisory meeting today, uh, is tremendous. It's it's uh, you know uh, my experience is on boards and with public companies and definitely uh, Rob accounts to the board at a public company standard. So I have no doubt that the money is being uh, spent on very good causes and very good initiatives within the center and I'm just very, very pleased and proud to be part of it. Thanks. Oops. Yeah, take a couple of pictures here. Special thanks to uh, Robin Richardson and Alex Verricchio for uh, standing in for the students tonight. They represent all the students at, in the Asper School. Alex from the MBA program and Robin from the BCom. So thanks to them as well. And thank you, Stu. And thanks to Charles as well. Okay, it's almost time to get down to business. So that for those of you that were here last year, I always talk about the fact there's tradition. In Canada, whenever the finance minister brings down the new budget, he gets a new pair of shoes. Went out and got a new pair of shoes. There you go, fancy socks to go with them. Uh, yeah, nice. Uh, all I ask is that unlike the current finance minister, I do not want a non-confidence vote at the, end of the, at the end of the event. I'd like to keep my job, thank you very much. The other tradition we've got is, we're, we're going to see in a minute, we did lose one tradition though, that for the first uh, six years of the existence of this competition, we had probably Stu's favorite Stu Clark Center employee, Mr. Kevin Gilbert, who would stand up here, get in the face of the presenters and yell stop at 60 seconds. Unfortunately, uh, Kevin's decided to move on to bigger and better things. He's now gone to Stats Canada where he's responsible for the census in southern Alberta. So he's not here tonight. However, we do have a more than able stand-in in the Ministers of Cool. So much like the Oscars, what's going to happen is when your 60 seconds is up, the band will play. 
Now, they're not just going to play any song. They've seen your business plans. They've seen where you're from. Our music director, Mr. Jerry Atwell over here, has selected a piece of music for each and every team that's presenting tonight. <laughs> Something that's commensurate with your plan or where you're from. When you hear that piece of music, you're done. By the way, I doubt you'll be able to speak over the band. <laughs> okay? So what's going to happen is the teams are going to come in. We're also going to make one other small change. We're going to do a late night theme. I'm going to be David Letterman. So where's the Ball State guys? Where's the Ball State guys? Okay. All right. So I'm going to be David Letterman tonight, a much bigger version. Okay. The teams will come in. They're going to have a seat. We're going to bring them two at a time. Just before you get up to present, we're going to ask you a couple of questions, a little small talk. Then you're going to make your way to the microphone. 60 seconds. The clock will start. Mr. Angad Singh from the Stu Clark Center over here. He's the guy with the stopwatch. He's going to make sure things go to time. And then you're going to be done at 60 seconds. Our judges, who I'll introduce momentarily, when they come in, will score. And on Saturday night, we will give away the dinner to 529. Now, we have another tradition here. Because you're going curling tomorrow night. If you ever go to a curling bond spiel, you're always let in by a bagpiper. Or as Perm Jot, where's Perm Jot? He said, what are all these guys running around in, in skirts for? They're kilt, Perm Jot. You're from London. You should know this one. <laughs> uh, Perm Jot's uh, keeled over in the back. You'll see him tomorrow. He's our keynote speaker. We have a piper who's going to bring them in. And they're going to come up to the front, and then we'll start the program. So ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated for this. We're going to bring the teams in. Here we go. after we do this? All right. Okay. Hang on. One sec. So there's one final tradition. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's one final tradition. Colin here has been a student at the Asper School of Business. He's been coming out to do this for a few years. The final tradition is not, not only do you pay the piper in cash. Don't worry. We've got it for you. We're good. <laughs> but you also have a shot of scotch with him. So. You gonna play one more? He's gonna do one more. One more.
Please have a seat. Thanks, Jerry. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to have our first two universities come up, which I do believe is the University of Louisville and Jerry. Who else is ours? Well, Rob, <laughs> we have the University of Louisville, and we have from that university, Jenny and Corbin. Am I correct? Sir? Jenny's coming up. Come on up, Jenny. <laughs> Jen, Jen. Jenny Corbin. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, so Jenny, I, I skipped ahead a bit. Let me introduce the judges first. Can't do this without the judges. Okay? From Deloitte and Touche, Carol Paradine. From Chorus Entertainment, the general manager, Mr. Garth Butchko. And a man who knows everything there is to know about marketing, the newest member of the Stu Clark Advisory Board, the CEO of Peak of the Market, Mr. Larry McIntosh. So what we're going to do before we start off, how long have you been in Winnipeg? One day. One day. One day. One day. So what do you think of Winnipeg so far? It's cold. It's cold. <laughs> this is warm. Jerry, is this warm compared to what we normally get? Balmy. Balmy, you see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you know, it, it can give you worse. It gets to minus 40 in the wintertime here. I've heard. Yeah, you've heard. Okay. So anything you want to see when you're in Winnipeg? Anything you want to do? I want to win this competition. You want to yeah. win this competition? All right. Well, that's what we like to hear. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to take the microphone. You can step up. You get 60 seconds. It's a minute to win it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Over 66 million cattle in the U.S. are plagued by a common blood-sucking parasite known as the horn fly. This fly causes an economic devastation of over $1 billion each and every year. This is due to weight loss, lower productivity, lower milk yield, and increased labor. Current products on the market only mask the problem and are becoming more and more ineffective. Therefore, infestations are at an unbearable level. TNG Pharmaceuticals will sell, through distributors, Flyvax, a revolutionary new vaccine that inhibits the fly's ability to effectively feed on the cow. Therefore, with one treatment, we can systematically eradicate this pest. 
we will offer investors a 68% IRR of 37 times cash on cash for a $1.8 million equity investment that would get us through production and testing phases of Flyvax. We are TNG and we are creating cash cows. Thank you. Jerry, who's our next guest? Our next guest are from John Hopkins University. We have, sorry, my uh, days of reading nine point font are behind me. We have T. Rick Bard and James Ware. So have a seat. Okay. So what we're doing this year is, while the judges get their scores together, we thought we'd just have a chat. So uh, sure. James, uh, how long have you been in Winnipeg? About a day as well. About a day as well. And what do you think about Winnipeg? By the way, it's Johns Hopkins. Yeah, it yeah is. there you go. Thank you. You remember the S. Um, well, I would say it's probably not as cold as I would have thought it would be. You know, coming from Baltimore, the weather can be a little cold this time of year. Okay. So I wasn't as shocked as I was. Um, but so far, so good. So far, so good. So did you see anything you liked today when you were out and about? Um, well, actually, because I got up at 5 a.m. to fly here, I went to sleep immediately upon getting here. <laughs> okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. So nice nap, though. Well, that's good. Bed's nice and soft. They're actually really soft. The feather bed or the uh, the mattress? Um, both. I'm no, sorry. okay, both. Well, I thought I'd ask because the Fort Carey Hotel is a sponsor of the competition. Ooh. Okay, <laughs> Talk to those guys afterwards. There you go. <laughs> All right, James. Tell you what, I, I'm getting the cue from our judge uh, over here that they're ready. Great. I'll take the microphone back and good luck. You 60 seconds. Okay. How many of you know someone who recently had a child? which means you're probably familiar with storing a child's core blood for their life-saving stem cells. But what you don't know is that the core blood units collected today only have enough cells to treat a patient up to the age of 12, and not as an adult. My name's James Waring, and I'm part of Theracord, a medical device company out of Johns Hopkins University that's developing an innovative new device, the CBX system, which maximizes the collection of these stem cells from not only the core blood, but also from the tissue. By doing so, the core blood banks, our customers, will be able to realize higher uh, revenues because every unit they can collect can be used to treat an adult as well, thus expanding the market. And this market's rapidly growing. Currently valued at $500 million, is expected to more than triple to $1.8 billion by the year 2020. We currently have a working prototype of the device being tested at Johns Hopkins Hospital and are seeking $400,000 in investment to finalize our product development as well as conduct testing for our FDA 510K submission. Invest with us today to become the standard of care in all births worldwide. Thank you. Great job. Under the water. Scott, and I'm not going to try your last name, Scott. 
There we go. Scott, come on, have a seat for a second. Gladly. So, Scott, you've come all the way from the great state of Texas. I have, the great Houston, country of Texas. The great country of Texas. Houston? Indeed, yep. Yeah, straight north to Winnipeg? Uh, yeah, I'm not, not too sure of the exact latitude and longitude, but it's, uh, it feels like it. Yeah, pretty much get on the I-35, man. It's like 30 <laughs> hours later, you're here. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. actually what we did. We, did. we left on uh, Monday. You left on Monday? Okay, well, I was going to say, my, my brother-in-law Dale's sitting out there. He's probably done that route a few times. <laughs> He's nodding his head in agreement. All right. So uh, on your drive up, what did, what did you notice about Manitoba? Well, we actually did fly, but um, okay. we, uh, <laughs> interesting enough, on that flight. Uh, uh, you, you, you took hot and they took the long route? Or, uh? <laughs> uh, we, uh, on the landing, we noticed a lot of, uh, I guess the terrain was a lot wider than we were expecting to be on the, the, the uh, descent. So I'm um, happy to be here. It's not as cold as I, I thought it was going to be and pleasantly surprised and really, really enjoying uh, Winnipeg and Manitoba. Right now. Good. And you're looking forward to the curling tomorrow night? Uh, indeed, indeed. All right, well, you've got the, uh, the national coach from uh, Denmark is coming out to show you guys how to curl tomorrow. Excellent. Maybe we'll, we'll get this caught on in Texas. Ah, uh, well, we're hoping. You guys could be a powerhouse next to Olympics. <laughs> I hope so. All right. Tell you what, I'm going to take the microphone back. 60 seconds. Take that elevator ride. All right. Imagine you've been diagnosed with a jaw tumor, and the tumor's been removed, but the re replacement that you've been provided with is structurally weak, it's infection-prone, and it compromises the overall integrity of the wound site. Now, Osteocene has developed a revolutionary new bone regeneration technology that utilizes a porous compound along with a highly controlled jug delivery system. And our product, Osteoplex, utilizes both of these components to produce a solution that is moldable, it's stronger, it's tissue compatible, and it overall drastically reduces infections. Now, the target market size for this product is $335 million. However, that could be greatly expanded with future application of the product. Furthermore, the Department of Defense has provided $1.5 million funding already to get us through phase one of clinical trials. So we're looking for $4 million over four years from a partner to help us get us through phase two and three. So imagine yourself and Osteocene, repairing form and restoring function. Hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, long time no see. So, you know, have a seat. We'll just sit here. The, the judges are going to get ready for a minute. So, Reba, you know, I could ask you how long you've been in Manitoba. But you, you've been here a long time. 32 years. 32 years. Okay. So, you know, that's an unfair question. So, let me ask you a question. What we heard about the prize. What's the big prize if you win the Stu Clark? 20,000. 20,000 Canadian dollars, which, by the way, for all the Americans in the audience, is now worth more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, what else do you get? The right to close the NASDAQ on August 26th. Okay, and your picture will be in a uh, national publication, and hopefully an international publication, where you take out a full page ad to celebrate this year's winner of the Stu Clark Investment Competition. So, Reba, I'll, you take that in a heartbeat? Okay, well, that's good. And I see your advisor in the back, he's got a big smile. He's ready to go. Our newest entrepreneur in residence, Mr. David Weaver, standing back there. David, give the crowd a wave. There you go. And he's standing nice and close to our, one of our other entrepreneurs in residence, Ms. Mavis McRae. Mavis, give the crowd a wave. There you go. All right, Reba, you ready? Yes. Mr. McIntosh is ready. There you go. 
Remember the last time you sat in your dentist chair to get a cavity filled? The sharp, painful needle they used to freeze your mouth. The high-pitched squeal of the drill and the burning sensation it had left in your nose. Pretty awful, right? Well, I have something exciting to tell you. With our new licensed diagnostic, you may never have to get another cavity filled again, as our technology can detect these cavities before they need to be filled. For you, it means less invasive treatments. For a dentist, more time can be spent on higher revenue procedures. For an investor, it's an $8.3 billion market. I'm Reba Caucasian for Northbright Diagnostics, and we're seeking a $1.5 million investment to bring our technology to market. In return, 25% equity and 30 times cash on cash in five years. I invite you to stop by our Northbright Diagnostic booth later this evening. Thank you. Excellent job, Reba. Matt is going to join us. Yeah, to do that. Welcome. Welcome to Winnipeg. Thanks for having us. Oh, you're very welcome. It's good to, after coming down to Ball State all those years, it's good to have you guys up here. Yeah, we are ready. You're ready? So what do you know about Winnipeg? Um, not too much. We got here about six hours ago. About six hours ago? Okay. We are pretty fresh. You are pretty fresh. So uh, you like the band so far? So far. Getting yeah. a little funky over there. All right. <laughs> okay. So anything you want to see when you're in Winnipeg? Um, just want to have a good time, meet some people. Uh, meet some people. Looking forward to the curling. Should be a very interesting experience. Well, you know, we got all sorts of awards for curling closest to the button. You know what the button is? No idea. Oh, okay. Well, I'll explain that tomorrow night. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe we should stick more with. We also have the award for being able to stay on your feet. Ooh, uh, I may have trouble with that one. Okay. Well, you know, we'll give you some lessons. I know Jen's out there. She'll help you out with that. Perfect. All right. I'm looking at the judges. The judges are ready. Going to take the microphone. You have 60 seconds. Good evening, my name is Matt McLaughlin with Unified Communication Systems, innovative tracking solutions for your K-12 school bus communications network. All right, imagine you're a parent and you have to work every single day. Your kid goes to the bus stop, you have no idea if they got on the bus in that morning or after afternoon. You have no idea if they got off the bus that evening. So we're working with the US military to redevelop a patent that sends an email or text message to parents every time their, school, their kid gets on or off the school bus. We're also developing a GPS system that parents can get on our web portal or smartphone application to see the real-time location of their student's bus to see if it's still en route. Um, also, here in Manitoba, it's very cold, not wanting to send their kids out 20 minutes before the bus arrives. So we are uh, offering the solution to these parents. Um, we are seeking $100,000 in investment to fund web design and software development for 18% uh, equity stake in Unified, Unified Communication Systems. Thank you.
All right. Well, Rob, our next contestant is from the University of Michigan. And we have Bambi. Welcome. There you go for you. Come on, have a seat. So you come from the great state of Michigan? I, <laughs> some people think so. No, no, no yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah? So when did you get to Winnipeg this afternoon? About four hours About ago. About four hours ago. Mm -hmm. it seems to be the common theme, you know, just come in, blow into town, win some money, blow it again. Well, you know, I don't know. It depends if we get into trouble. We might be stuck here, so we'll see. Oh, well, you know, we can find trouble for you. <laughs> we, we can do that for you. Okay. So anything in particular you want to see while you're, while you're in Manitoba? I don't, um, you know, no, I'm having a good time here, you know, at the hotel. Uh, nothing in particular. Did you enjoy the, the food tonight? Everything was good? Yeah, I'm actually a vegetarian, so okay. there were some, you know, as a vegetarian, you're always fearful of the hors d'oeuvre platter because, like, it's usually all meat, but there were some vegetarian options, so it was nice. Very good. All right, well, I'll tell you what. All right. We're going to turn you over. You get 60 seconds for that minute to win it. Hi, I'm Verity Ergen with OWN. Um, so... If you're a small business today, you're really disadvantaged um, because you're using a cash register, a retail store, a small mid-sized retail store using a cash register. And the problem is that the people you're going up against are companies like Starbucks and, and Nordstrom's and Walmart, and they're using these big, expensive point of sale systems that give them a lot of data about their business. And with this data, they can make decisions that allow them to service their customers even better. But with the cash register, you're not able to do that. Um, the reason for that is because the device itself has been cost prohibitive and small businesses have been able to afford the five dollars or $10,000 expensive systems. So what we've done at OWN is we built a completely web integrated point of sale system and we deliver it via tablet. So the 500,000 stores that are still using cash registers can for the first time now start to get the same data and analytics about their business that big companies do. It's a $6 billion market. We're raising $2.5 million. We're expecting a 44% IRR and a seven times cash on cash return for our investors. And uh, I'm very again with OWN. More than happy. <laughs> Constantine, welcome. How are you? Good, you? Thank you. I'm Good. Great. Thank you. Have a seat for a second. We're just going to chat for a second. So, Constantine, how was the flight up from D.C. today? It was pretty long. But pretty long? Where'd yes. you go through? We went to Chicago. Chicago. Yes, very early. Very early and probably had to sit there for a couple hours waiting to come yes, in. That's correct. Always. You're a tall guy, so how did, how did you enjoy flying the RJ into Winnipeg? It was interesting. It was interesting. <laughs> okay. where's, Bar where's Barry? He's working hard to get bigger planes into Winnipeg. Yeah, well, actually, the plane from Chicago to Winnipeg was uh, roomier than the one from D.C. to Chicago. Oh, really? So, okay. Yeah. Wow. Just, I know United was in trouble, but I didn't realize they were going for the small planes now. <laughs> so anything that you, you've seen in Winnipeg so far that intrigues you? Uh, yeah, I'm a food type of guy, so I already went to an Indian restaurant. Okay. And I enjoyed it quite a bit, so that's what I keep, want to keep on going. Well, I'll tell you, Winnipeg's noted for its restaurants, so you'll have a lot of choices and we have some of the finest Indian foods. So if you want to go back to an uh, Indian restaurant, we have lots of fine ones. And I'm sure that any, anybody from Winnipeg can give you a pointer where to go. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, I'll tell you what. I know you want to tell us about your business, and I can tell the judges are ready. So I'm going to take the microphone, and you get 60 seconds. Thank you. That's the block. Sixty percent of restaurants fail every year. Sixty percent. In Provonia's pioneer business model is tailored to this $210 billion industry, providing a centralized, online, simple to use, end to end software management tool. How does it work? Our point of sale 
communicates with our online inventory management, which integrates with our online ordering process. This service is provided for free for the restaurant. At the same time, we take the vendors and we connect them with our network of restaurants, creating a brand new sales channel for the vendors. This also happens to be our revenue model. We generate 2.8% on sales done through Improvonia. Just like Google, this service is free to the users and we charge the vendor side of the equation. So based on the 10 bids that we received from software development firms, we're seeking 200,000 seed funding to commercialize this product and offer investors a 45% IR two years from today. Great job, thank you. Welcome. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Come on, have a seat. So you came all the way up from Atlanta or did you come from the West Coast today? Uh, West Coast. West Coast. So what was it like on the West Coast when you left? You know, I left 80 degrees. You left 80? Yeah. You don't, this is like gorgeous, man. The sun was out. Oh, I, I heard it was raining great. earlier. It don't oh. come, the sun will come back. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad it's not cold though. No, it's, it's not cold. It's, it's nice. So you, what do you know about Winnipeg before you got here? Well, I saw a comedian said that uh, this was the center of North America, and that was about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is the center of North America. But uh, I'm looking to learn more. Well, that's good. Well, we're going to show you a, a bit about Winnipeg. I hope you've learned a bit about the musical culture from the Ministers of Cool. And we'll show you a bit more tomorrow night with the curling, and then we've got some other special surprises as we go through the weekend. But first, we want to hear you do a 60-second pitch of your business. So I'm going to turn you over to the big microphone. Best of luck. Large companies make big investments in supply chain technologies, but they've created a new problem. They've scattered information across multiple applications, and now the user has lost productivity, and what's worse, they've lost business response. Business response costs companies billions in lost sales. What we've done is we've created a technology that looks across multiple software applications, pulls that information together, and allows the company to respond faster to changing uh, conditions in the marketplace. We have three pilot, two pilot customers, both billion dollar companies. One is your own Celestica Inc. here. Uh, we also have Motorola, which is uh, scheduled to be next on our list. What we're looking for is $4 million in two tranches so that we can accelerate growth and uh, accelerate our development. Thank you. All right. Great job. Thank you very much.
Alex Barrett. Aaron, welcome. Thank you. There you go. I'll give you the microphone. Thank you. All right. So let me ask you a different question. I've asked everybody else, you know, what they think of Winnipeg. No, no, no. no, no. Wait, I have. You've got something for me? I have, no, go ahead. Oh, go. I was going to say right. a good anecdote? No, that's fine. No? no? Okay. So of the musicians, yes. who do you think used oh. to play in a country band? Shades. <laughs> <laughs> He's right, yeah. He's right. <laughs> Actually, uh, there's two of us. There's two of them, yeah. I was going for... <laughs> three. See, I, I, three. They've all played in the country. This is Winnipeg. Everybody's played country at some point. It's required by law. It's required by law? Okay. And <laughs> So So, you, you, do you have a question for the band? Do you want to ask them a particular tune they can play? Or? Oh, we'll put them on the spot. They want, they want a country tune, though. These boots were made for walking. Oh. <laughs> That's yeah. Who's going to sing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I think they've done their part. Tell you what, I'm going to let you go to the microphone. You can do your part. How's that? Okay. All right. All right. Best of luck. So let's talk about wine. Okay, wine is about 30% of a restaurant's revenue, but 85% of profit. So wine ends up being the lifeblood of restaurant profitability, but they're doing a terrible job at it. So think about the most common metric of wine decision making in a restaurant. It's the second least expensive wine on the menu. You know you've done it. You don't want to look, you know, like a cheapskate, but you don't know what else to order. So restaurants are leaving about 20% increase in revenue on the table uh, in a $21 billion, sorry, $12 billion market. Um, that's a pretty serious potential. Um, so uh, what we're doing is we have a product grail. It's an interactive iPad wine menu to help people gladly spend more on wine. Thank you. They want, that, they want that wine dinner then. It'll be fantastic. It'll be Saturday night. Perfect. Oh. Right. That's what I was going to say. I was say, Jerry, we're going to get you some longer arms? Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all the way up from San Diego State? Yeah. You know who else has a connection to San Diego State? Winnipeg? Uh, Winnipeg does, but somebody much more important than that. Qualcomm? That's where, that's where, that's where Stu Clark's daughter went to school. So she had her undergrad degree there. Wow. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Jerry, sometimes you tell them just for yourself, that was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so you came in from San Diego today. You're all set to, to experience Winnipeg. We have everything San Diego does. Especially the weather. Especially the weather. San Diego has Mission Bay. We have the Forks right across the street. Lots of water, most of it ice. Okay? <laughs> but you'll have a great time. Lots to see and do here. You can see the cathedral just like the mission in San Diego. Be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> you know, so tell us about your business idea. So go for it, my friend. We live in a... 
We live in a world where there's going to be digital displays everywhere. You guys have seen them at the airport. You guys have seen them digital billboards. Wherever you go, you're going to be hit with advertising. Our vision is for you to see one of our ads the moment you walk out your home. Our strategy is to aggregate digital out-of-home networks which control these digital billboards. We have built a web-based bidding platform that allows us to stream relevant ads and content to digital out-of-home displays. Think of it as the Google AdWords for a world five years down the line from here. We're seeking $250,000 in seed investment to keep our garage company running and keep our servers up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you again. Thank you very much. Yeah, so also up from this great state of California. That's true. Yeah. So what do you like to think of Manitoba? You got here this afternoon. The hotel's it's, lovely. Yeah. I've, the airport's great, too. I, those are the two landmarks I've seen so far. Well, you know, there's not much more. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not true. We researched it on the flight. We saw all the great landmarks or read about all the landmarks. Oh, so what's the first landmark you want to go see? I think we're going to go to the Forks. All right. Do you know where it is from here? We have no idea. It's right across the street. But we're in the perfect location. You're in the perfect location. Excellent. All right. So I think they're all set for you. I've got the judges already. I'm going to let you go and do your. Yeah, you can use the handheld chair. We're not like a lot of the products you're going to see here tonight. We're not high tech and we're not complicated. We are a small, simple product that caters to a niche market. But that niche is $2.2 billion annually in North America. We're the rod rescuer, we make fishing equipment. And the rod rescuer, what that is, it's a small device that attaches to your fishing rod. And should that rod fall in the water, once it becomes submerged, a balloon activates, causing it to resurface. It's small, it's lightweight, and it serves as an insurance product on your costly investment in your fishing equipment. What we're offering you is a small, is initially a small investment, a short time frame, and a significant return after only three years. We're the rod rescuer. Come fishing with us. We think you'll like what you catch. <laughs>
Nice to meet you. Come on, have a seat. Thank you. So, how was the trip up from Chicago today? You know, we only had one flight, uh, one flight to make up here from Chicago. We got on uh, after the folks from D.C., so it was actually quite nice. Good times. You know, Winnipeg is to Chicago in the north. That's what I've heard. Actually, uh, I, I grew up in North Dakota, so that uh, for me, uh, Winnipeg sort of was the Chicago in the north. Yeah, it was the big city. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, what part of North Dakota? Uh, the uh, the big old town of Bismarck. Bismarck. Oh, oh, you betcha. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so th this is the big time, because you're used to going to Brandon. I, I, I guess. Yeah, um, like Brandon. I, I, I think. <laughs> Maybe Minnesota. Brandon's on the western side of Manitoba. It's for a little bit north of Bismarck. Sure. All right. Sure. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, for you, this is nothing new. You know, as you come across the border, see things. What was the best part of coming to Canada when you were growing up? Um, the best part. Well, I'll tell you a little, little different thing. Uh, we actually had a uh, had a French exchange student when I was growing up who uh, forgot her passport. So we uh, we drove from Bismarck, you know, through uh, Fargo and Grand Forks, trying to come see Winnipeg. Um, then we had to turn around. Uh, so, you know. But you have to see the highlights. We, uh, we did, of uh, North Dakota. Of, of North, oh, absolutely. Grand, Grand absolutely. Forks and Fargo? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Badlands, Badlands, though. Ba the Badlands, yeah. They're, they're very nice. Oh, you should come go. down and visit. I've been to Bismarck. It's actually a very, very pretty place. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. it's got some buildings. Yeah. Michael Moore yeah. poked fun at it. It's got some buildings, yeah. <laughs> It's got, it's got the state capital is very nice, but nice picture of Angie Dickinson in the state capital. Yeah. Who's from Dickinson, North Dakota? That's a, that's yeah. a good good name then. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> and a, another useless anecdote. Just take back to Northwestern. <laughs> got to give the judges some time. That's right. Well, I think the judges are ready. As a matter of fact, I think, I think some of them are a little purple, so they're, they're calling up a Northwestern team. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to turn right. it over to you, and you can either use the handheld or the uh, stationary mic. Glad to hear. Okay. All right. All right, so uh, what if I were to tell you about an uh, internet retailer that got the lion's share of its uh, inventory on a consignment terms and had 70% gross margins? Not only was it a good business in, from a profitability standpoint, but this business was going to generate $5 million to help out uh, low-income communities through its nonprofit partners. Not in a way that hurts the company financially, but in a way that actually strengthens the business. Well, that's what we're doing at GoodyShirt.com. What we're doing is we're partnering with nonprofit thrift operations like Salvation Army to pick out vintage t-shirts like this and fill an unmet need for consumers to find their perfect vintage t-shirt online. What that allows us to do is to take a product that used to be selling for at most a dollar, probably going to a scrap heap somewhere, and sell it online for 20 bucks. GoodyShirt.com will be launching in two months. Uh, come see us on uh, June 1st. Uh, buy a t-shirt and hopefully donate some money to the Salvation Army. All right. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Good to be. Well, it's good to see you. Another Texan. Another Texan. Another Texan. Another so you're native-born Texan? Native-born Texas. We're actually from the University of Texas at Dallas. Uh, family is uh, long-time Dallasites, you could say, for about 100 years. And uh, yeah, I spent uh, my whole life there. All right. So what do you think of Winnipeg so far? I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I'm excited. I think I have kind of an untapped potential for curling. I don't know why. <laughs> I just, I don't know. We'll, we'll give it a shot. Who knows? <laughs> We'll see, but I'm excited. You could be in America's next great curler. Yes, yes. That and it, sounds like a great television show. It does sound like a great television show. Jerry, do you think we could do that as a TV show? 
Uh, it's already a movie. <laughs> it's already a movie. <laughs> so, do you want to tell us a bit about your idea? You can use the handheld or you can I'm use the stationary. All right. All right. There you go. Thank you. Good luck. So, the $75 billion lighting industry is on the verge of a huge change due to government mandates around the world, phasing out incandescent light bulbs like this one here. And this provides an opportunity to redefine what lighting is and what it can be. We're at Lumi Solutions, and we're turning lighting imagination into a reality. We've invented and patented a new lighting product, a Lumi, that gives you personal control to program, automate, and adjust your lighting to fit your mood when, where, and how you want. Essentially, it's a high-end LED bulb, fully color changeable, dimmable, and long life that can be uh, directly controlled through a smartphone, a tablet, or a computer. Without installation, uh, it's as simple as screwing in the light bulb itself, so no other complex wiring, etc. So the market opportunity, there's a number of niche market opportunities in this growing industry, and considering just urban rental apartments, as well as mixed-use hospitality, the market potential is over $4 billion. Again, we're Illumi Solutions, and we're turning lighting evolution into a reality. Good job. Thank you. Selling CDs, right, Kateri? Oh, yeah, we do have CDs for selling. Here's just a cool. We love playing corporate events anywhere in the world. <laughs> but speaking of anywhere in the world, the place we'd most like to play next is University of Arkansas. <laughs> we'd like to invite Priscilla. Hi, welcome. Have a seat for a second. You are more than welcome to join us in Arkansas, although I think it's a little colder down there today than it is up here. So wait until next week. <laughs> They're very particular. The temperature just has to be just right. Yeah. Well, you know, it will be sunny golfer. in the summer, so you can come on over. Well, keep in mind that, uh, you know, one of the things is uh, we're going to bring these guys with, with us to New York. Oh, okay. Well, August 26th, right? So yep. my calendar. August 26th on your calendar. You guys want to join the Arkansas team from last year? Well, that is the plan. Uh, they have left big, sh big shoes for us to fill. Big shoes to fill. Well, I'm sure you can do it. So you ready to tell us a bit about your idea? I think so. All right. There you go. Thank you. So I have one word for you. Just one word. Are you paying attention? Plastics. There's a bright future in plastics. In Cyclewood Solutions, we see that future. We see cities in over 25 U.S. states aggressively passing laws against single-use conventional plastic bags. We see consumers all over the world demanding alternatives. That's why when we saw a patent for biodegradable lignin-based plastic in a $4 billion U.S. industry screaming for an alternative, we jumped at it. Your $600,000 investment today will help us bring our product to life, the Xylo Bag, giving retailers a cost-effective, sustainable plastic bag that will biodegrade in 150 days. The same investment will let us create three will let us create 3.5 billion bags by 2015, $160 million valuation. So I say to you, plastics, a bright future in biodegradable plastics. If you give me 15 minutes of your time, I won't waste it. Thank you.
have our penultimate con uh, contestant is the Sassoon Graduate Institute of Business Administration. We have uh, Victor Chai. Good to see you again. How's it going? Here you go. That's for you. Yeah, I'm doing well. Oh, good. Well, welcome to Winnipeg. It's very nice here. Yeah. Well, you guys showed me a great time when I was in Bangkok back in February, and we want to return the favor for you. You guys were such great hosts. So we we'll hope this weekend we can show you and Nick, your advisor, just as much fun. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. So anything in particular we can show you? Um, I'm, I'm not too familiar with Winnipeg, so you, you ah, have to tell me. We can show you anything we want then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we have this great hill in the south end of town. It, it's, it's made of snow. It's like 10 stories tall. You can come down and have a look at it. We have a flag on top. Okay, I'll let our advisor go first. Uh, okay. He's okay. a mountain climber, is he? <laughs> That's oh, true. It is true. All right. You all set to tell us a bit about your business? Absolutely. All right. You want to use the handheld or you want to use the station mic? All right. You're all set. They say you are what you eat. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pause for a moment and think about what you put into your body every day. Wouldn't it be nice if you had a food that was really good for you and yet it tastes so delicious? Thanks to a uh, lifelong research, our globally renowned rice science researcher has come up with a new variety of rice that offers the delicious, delicious taste of the world famous Thai jasmine rice and the antioxidant benefit exceeding those of blueberry. We call this jasperry. With IP protection, our market has been growing double digit for the past decade. We are going after the U.S. organic rice consumer worth $1.1 billion. We are currently under negotiation with Safeway and Whole Foods, so expect Jasperi to be on shelf January next year at Whole Foods. They say seeing is believing. I say eating is believing. Thank you. All right. There you go, have a seat. So Tom, would you like to see these guys play again? I would. You would? All right, so where's everybody playing Our this birthday is September 12th. I uh, plan to have it at uh, the Marriott in Portland, Oregon. Get you there. The Marriott, that sounds good. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll give you a card. Please do. <laughs> so I think this weekend they're playing in a few places. Jerry, where, where's everybody playing this weekend in the band? Oh, well, we're playing all over the place. I know that there's a big party going on at the downtown Point Grill tomorrow night. Uh, I'm performing at the Vanity here Saturday evening at a place called Pyramid with a reggae band called Voice of Boom. Our uh, keeper player, Larry Shaw, you're off to the guess who somewhere? Alexandria, Louisiana, tomorrow. Yes. And uh, the rest of the guys don't really get out of work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what are you going to play at the Marriott and when you're in Portland? What's that? What, what kind of music do you play at the... I'd like a little two-step. Uh... <laughs> what is it? I don't play. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I see the sunshine since I don't know when. <laughs> Bit of a tease. All right, so you ready to tell us what you brought up from the great state of Oregon? I am. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Tom Kramer from Sonus LLC. 
and we're working in conjunction with Pacific Northwest National Laboratories to commercialize and deploy RO, a container screening device that uses acoustic pulses to identify the liquid contents of a sealed container. There are currently no other technologies on the screening market that have this capability. In accordance with the 2007 federal mandate, 100% of all air cargo has to be screened. This can't happen right now, so that's what we're targeting. It's a two, $2 billion a year is spent on screening equipment in this industry annually. Couple this with the mandate, an estimated 6% annual growth, and you've got a very attractive opportunity. We're currently looking for a strategic partner to provide $1.5 million in initial investing, which will get our prototype to market. Sonus LLC, a sound investment. All right. Jerry, why don't you introduce the rest of the band for us? We have on drums Daniel Roy, Daniel Roy, I was going to say Dan Roy. Dan is also an international recording artist, and, and then he records under the name Daniel Roa, O R A. You should check out his website, it's particularly if you speak French. Wonderful music, singer, songwriter. We have on guitar one of Canada's most talented vocalists, Paul McNair, everybody. He's performed with a band called Harlequin. If you are from Western Canada, you know that band. Uh, many of you know the Guess Who, had uh, many top 10 uh, hits all through the years. We have uh, their current keyboard player and vocalist, Leonard Bouchard. <laughs> this gentleman, uh, next to him, our bass player, has produced artists, uh, all international recording artists all over the world, um, including Theron and uh, the Weird Sisters. We have Don Benedictson. And we have another internationally renowned guitar player who's recorded his own CDs, performs. He currently is the go-to person for composing for theater, television, and he's performing with the symphony orchestras. We have Greg Lowe. <laughs> and I'm Jerry. Oh, Jerry, I get it. Tell us about yourself, Well, I was born at a very young age. I'm from the <laughs> born and raised here. And I perform in a number of bands around town. And um, if you're around Winnipeg, April 14th, the Ministers of Cool will be performing at a little place called the Norwood Hotel. We have a CD. We have a website, www.ministersofcool.com. And we have our CDs available on iTunes, CD Baby, if you want to download it. And uh, look forward to jamming a bit more for you tonight. All right. And Rob and I go back a long way. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, one of my very first jobs, uh, Jerry was my assistant back in the uh, results group market research days. And the, the, uh, the boss came to me and said, so I said, you get one other task. He said, Friday nights, Jerry's has a gig. You have a truck. You're supposed to drive him and his keyboard to his gig. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I knew I'd arrived in management. Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's right. So no, Jerry and I go a long way back, and the reason I asked about the country music was he used to play with a former roommate of mine, and I remember them practicing in the basement over and over wow. and over again, guitars and Cadillacs. Well, the song doesn't work unless you get it perfect. Oh, really? Yeah, well, you guys did a great job of that. So I want to thank Jerry for coming out. He does a great job for us during the years, our creativity person. Thank you. And... I also want to thank our judges for coming out. I hope they had a great time tonight. Garth, Larry, and Carol, thank you very much for all your hard work. We're going to get you to go away and choose the winner. We'll announce that Saturday, but the band's going to do one last tune. So back to Jerry and the band.
Okay.